Only two people looking towards each other can see the entirety of their surroundings. Through the eyes of the other, we see the world behind us. The collocutor in a dialogue brings additional vision. With every different perspective added to a dialogue, this vision grows. This is why democracy is intellectually productive. This is why debate is innovative. This is why new civilizations emerge at the contact zones of different cultures. Diversity nourishes. Hybrid thought sparks creativity. Varied talents create new civilizations. Human history attests to the inescapability of advancement under conditions of peaceful multiculturalism. Europe is the latest beneficiary of the peaceful coexistence of diverse cultures. Modern Europe is a combination of depopulated, elderly, but experienced native peoples, and an influx of young, energetic, multi-ethnic peoples from the peripheral countries. The first of these influxes came from the former colonies of the European powers. A further wave of migrants came only after the Second World War, which devastated the mainland of Europe, both economically and population-wise. For a swift reconstruction, Central and Western European countries needed a workforce. Initially, Italy, Greece, Spain, and Poland were the source of this labor. Soon afterwards, some Balkan countries, as well as Portugal, Morocco, Tunis, Algiers, and Turkey, also inked mutual agreements that brought workers into an old yet newly built continent. The second wave of newcomers was intended to work in the reconstruction of the old Europe. They were named guest workers. Neither their hosts nor they themselves thought they would stay and participate in the building of a new Europe. The children of these immigrant families soon realized they were part of Europe for good. They, together with the established communities, would rebuild Europe and would themselves be remade as Europeans. This dialogic relationship between Europe and its new communities culminated in a third generation with equal access to both their original culture and that of Europe. The initial influxes into Europe had to cope with prejudices. Their communities were perceived as chaotic, while they themselves were perceived as inferior. The first generation of workers that poured into European capitals from the peripheral villages of North Africa and Asia Minor provided sufficient incentive for this perception. Many of them resisted the idea of integrating into the new linguistic, cultural, urban space of Europe. Communities created their own neighborhoods, where they lived as if still in their countries of origin. They watched news relating to their remote hometowns, caring more about the weather forecast back home than about a possible flood next door. The second and third generations were different. They were aware how their parents suffered thanks to illiteracy and ignorance. The two later generations settled down geographically but moved up socioeconomically. Their means to ascending social strata was education. They opened schools, education centers, students and parent associations, support courses for their children, and organized different social and scientific Olympiads. In time, they realized they also had to build bridges with their neighbors. They established interfaith, intercultural dialogue associations, arranged encounters and meetings to build solutions with those who regarded them as a problem. Socioeconomic mobility brought about other changes within the third generation, new Europeans. They became the locomotive force of industry in their adopted home and established bridges of trade and cultural relations between their countries of origin and the new Europe. Their visibility in artistic and media activities increased. They founded civil society organizations and started to participate in local and national political processes. These new Europeans became truly and thoroughly involved in building a new Europe. Today, it is possible to see new Europeans in the economic, social, cultural, and even political scene. Europe is no longer a monochrome continent. 
And it is this new Europe that will overcome one of the worst financial crises in world history. Only through innovation, creativity, novel thinking, and multifaceted perspectives can Europe emerge from the challenges of this postmodern era. Only through clever utilization of its myriad talents can Europe shift into an era of resourcefulness and ingenuity. Only through an internalization of heterogeneity as a natural way of being can Europe find solidarity in multiplicity. Because diversity nourishes. Hybrid thought provokes creativity. Varied talents create new civilizations. Diverse talents will create the new Europe.